Is there? Uh, we'll manage. This here? Hey, don't start. Can we go and get my car now? Later. We've got too much to do. Kevin Mallon. Hey, listen, love. Get him to shift that stuff off the driveway first, yeah? Don't upset the neighbours. Sure. Hey, I thought it might have been your phone ringing for a minute. Well, don't be giving me dirty looks just cos you got dumped. Again. Can't we put him into care? Listen, the day's stressful enough without you two bickering. Sir? Yeah. Enough! Come on, let's get started. <sighs> Kevin. Kevin, listen. No, listen. I'm on two days off. It's been booked for ages. It's crazy there every day. Just deal with it. Look, I've got to go. Yes, so, what love? Keys? Uh, you've got them. I've heading to you. Kevin, look, if there's two lorries broken down, then phone for repair vehicles. Bloody hell! It's hardly the human genome project you're sorting out. Hold on a second. Ali, take more than that. No, that wasn't part of it. Yeah, hold on. Something else, Ali. Come on, there's loads to shift. Kevin, you wanted more responsibility, you've got it. No, don't call me back. I'm busy. But I've got to go. These are the wrong keys. Two sets. Oi, are you staying there all day? Might as well. Oh, come on, it's not the end of the... the world. I know. I need my car. I need my mobile. Ellie might want to call me. Well, you know, your phone was packed in one of the boxes. Yeah, accidentally, on purpose. By you. We'll find it. Yeah, and don't be accusing me of things. It's against the law. Oi! Noise! Di! <sighs> what time was that appointment? Same time as it was when you asked me off an hour ago. We've got ages yet. Flaming solicitors. Just relax. <laughs> relax? It's all right for you. I'm the one that's in the frame. And you've been watching too many detective programmes. Yeah, well, I wish I thought it was a big joke. We're going to the solicitor for a bit of advice, that's all. First it was the police for a bit of a chat. Then it was the CAB for a bit of guidance. And now it's the solicitors all of a sudden for a bit of advice. Well, if it makes you feel better, we can say we're going for another chat. <laughs> well, here we are. You home? You life? Come here. Mm. Oh, do you have to? <coughs> Tradition. So was that duck and stool thing. <laughs> I don't want to have to resort to law on this. I knew you'd get dirty. I'm trying to be reasonable. That's all I wanted, to be reasonable. And for somebody to consider me as a human being, not a piece of horse meat. Look, whether you think you're horse meat or not, you've made your point. But you know, this is my house and I don't expect to be standing out here all day. Oh, going to break the door down, are you? No. No, I am going to get someone, just anyone, to talk to you to get you out of there because I don't want any doors breaking in. I'll claim squatters' rights. Today is your last day in there, whatever happens. We'll see. <sighs> hey. Could put air on one of them ducking stool things. What are you? I never know. I've told you. Noise. New house, new life. Remarkably clean house by the looks of things. It's spotless. So, all of us dead positive. I've packed in smoking, as agreed. It's a new house, non-smoking policy. Hey, it's not affecting me. It's been 14 days, 8 hours and 57 minutes. Anyway, we've moved up. Somewhere nice. Somewhere a fair away from a pizza job. Short bus ride. Oh, the lad's gonna get here. Stop causing problems. When can I get my car? Later, love. That goes in the kitchen. See the new neighbours are moving in. They must be loaded getting professional removals, people. I hope there's someone my age there. Might be some young lad. Loads of money. Might take you out. Ooh, yeah. Some hunk. Might go over there and introduce myself. You won't be going anywhere. What? You're grounded. But... You didn't think you'd be getting away with selling that bracelet, did you? Oh, we're not going through this again, are we? We got it back. No. No, we had to pay to get it back. Go into my room. Fine. When you get back down, I want a word. Small matter of 80 quid to clear up. Oh, 
OK, yeah, I'll talk to me dad. Any chance of Andy or what? Do you know what? I'm sure that's that lad who had that rave. Have you, uh, have you got any tuna? Uh, yeah, there might be a tin somewhere. Yeah, Some yeah. Someone said the will do. OK, yeah, yeah, fine. Bring him over. Here it is. It is, you know, it's definitely him. Dad, we never mind that. My head's done in here. The kitchen is chocolate and it's starting to look like a car boot sale in here. Yeah, and I still can't find me box. Oh, where did you last have it? Well, I don't know. It'll be in that room where Jessie is. Well, she's not going to let you in there. Well, she's going to have to. It's full of personal effects. I'll talk to her. Yeah, I'll try talking to her as well, but she doesn't want to seem to listen to me. Max Pop. I should have a word with that new family about that rave, you know. Tell you what, we'll take those flowers over to them later on and I'll pick me moment. Moment, Maxie. And uh, that was Bev on the phone. She needs Josh looking after for a couple of hours. Oh, and she wants me to do it, like? Well, I'll be here as well. No, excuse me, I'm not here on a social call. How's Jessie? Oh, she's wonderful. She's still barricaded in there, as if you didn't already know. I'm uh, making her a sandwich. What? Well, you can't expect her to starve to death now, can you? I'll make her a flask of tea as well. Well, you'll hardly get her out of there if she's cosseted, will you? Look. Can you isolate the electricity upstairs in there? Same as you can in here. Oh, don't be too hard on her. It can't be much fun for her being up there on her own. Maybe well, she's all right, she might give in. Nah, no, she's a tough old bird. Be like the siege of Maffer King in here. Of course, you can all relax now. She's not your problem, can you? Do you know, she was your tenant. Ah, yeah, but as you say, Maxie, not my problem now. Yes, well, look, I've got things to do in work. I've been trying to get in touch with Nikki. Between you and her, she... No, I'm sorry. Are you listening to me? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get the bones out of these sardines. Oh, Jesse hates them. Well, between you, Emily, Nikki, the UN, and whoever else, I want you to go in there and get Jesse out. Otherwise, this could become really dirty. Have you got any salad cream? Uh, yeah, in one of the boxes. Mad, this, isn't it? She should be with him. Yeah, well, I've got some plans in that direction myself. Won't be long. There's about five of the new lot. That's what I counted, anyway. Got us some mince for tea. Oh, fantastic. We could do a few things with that. Bolognese, chilli, Nana Musaka. What? She's a singer. Nana Muscari. Only we used to say Nana Musaka. You know, because she's Greek. Mm. And the other big fella. Demi Uzo. Mm. I go on a bit, don't I? I suppose we all do. Yeah, listen, um, I'm going for a walk. I was just going to make us a drink. Yeah, I know, but, well... Jimmy, wait. I think we need milk. No, we don't. We've got plenty. What's up with you? Nothing. I don't feel right. Why? Because... Because of what went on in there. Oh, I didn't tell you, Jimmy, to get it, yeah? Yeah, but, you know... You and me in here on our own, I don't want you getting worried. I'm not. Yeah, but... Don't look for a problem if one doesn't exist. I trust you with me life. <laughs> when I'm on medication. We both know that, Jimmy, on medication, look, so... Look, Nicky, um... Could you tell... Anyone else would happen? No, I wouldn't do that to you. It's a trust thing. What about you know? You and him are like that. I wouldn't tell a soul about what happened. Tom. So, I'm gonna go for a breath of fresh air anyway. <coughs> hey, listen, Maxie Farnham called around something about your nan barricading herself in his or something. What? Oh, he sounded narky. Better ask him yourself. I'll see you later. Jimmy. Everything's cool, okay? pounds, please. You know I haven't got it. You got forty pounds from the pawn broker, plus you owe another forty quid. I needed it for me holiday. If we don't all get the full whack and we'll have to pay more. Everyone's getting panicky that it's not gonna happen. You'd be spot on and all. Look, Natalie Bullard's dropped out, so the cost's gone up already. And why don't you add your name to the list of dropouts? Just for selling a bracelet. It wasn't just any bracelet, love. You're too young to go on holiday on your own and for selling that. It was mine to sell. It was a family heirloom. Yeah. You don't go around selling history like that. Family memories for some fortnight in the sun. Yeah, but this holiday will be my memories. Help to make my history. You think you're so smart, don't you? Look, can't we just forget about it? No. But I'm nearly 17. Then act it. Marty. I'm going to study in my room. I've tried talking to her, but she won't listen. Why don't you come and get me sooner? I didn't want to trouble you. It's no trouble if me nan needs help. Well, that's just it. She's being so tough. I don't think she needs it from anyone. Well, she can't stay in here. Oh. Yes? Who is it? It's me, Ray. What's my birthday? 21st of May. No, it's not. No, it's a code. You see, if I give her a correct birthday, she'll know Max is out here and she won't open the door. Nan, it's Nicky. Uh, it is a friend, yes, I can confirm that. I do know my own granddaughter's voice. I was just trying to maintain security, you know. What's going on? Hasn't he told you? Yeah, but... 
Do you think this is the right thing to do now? We're being ignored. And it's to do with our age. Yeah, yes, because they're treating us like pensioners. Well, you are, aren't you? But they're treating us as if we haven't got a brain cell between us. What do you have to get from all this? I'm not sure now. But I've always had my dignity. And nobody's ever taken me for granted. I'm not going to start now. Tomo, we're in the new place. Ah, oh, it's brilliant. There's three babies of next door. Sisters. And the one with the biggest pair keeps giving me the eye. I wish. It's crap. I mean, me mum and dad are made up with it, but it's miles from anywhere. The only good thing is we've got a DVD. Yeah, hold on. Where do we live? I'll have to find you back with the address. You can get down here. See you later. Dad? Yeah, where do you want the fridge? Uh, in the bathroom. Where else do you think it was going, pea brain? The fella asked me. He was winding you up, son. Well, he gives a hand with the heavier stuff. Uh, someone's got to set up the telly and sound system. We could have used that money towards a new kitchen. Last people may have left it clean, but it's old and shabby and got to go. Time, love and money. Do the new bathroom as well. That's all right and all. For now. Uh, just there, mate, please. Hey, and Ali, go and get your surfboards and bikes off the car. I'll do it when someone gets to you. Oh, he's not coming, is he? Get the gas masks out. Look, he just happens to like beans, that's all. He does it on purpose. He's like a circus actor. Kirsty, don't just sit. I need my mobile. Yeah, and we need some help. He's not helping. Yeah, come on, you outside. Hang on. Dad, I've got to connect the satellite dish to the system, so does the DVD go to the digibox and then the VCR or the digital Whatever, DVD? Mate. Thank you. <sighs> Hello? Kevin, what's up now? Yeah, what about it? Well, get another driver. Check the rotors. That's your job while I'm here. On my days off. I hope those wires are going to be hidden. Wires? It's speaker cable. Do we know what time the phone's getting switched on? Sometime today. I'll get that. It's like being cut off from the rest of the world. <sighs> You're not kidding. May as well be Bruce and Basie. No, Kevin. Dad, uh, help. I've got to go. What the hell are you doing? Connect to the washing machine. Oh. Don't stop, Tabla! Someone's trying to help. Hey, Blake, anything better? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Ta. Making your fella a thank you card. It'll be Lovely. Thanks very much. I know that our first year. Flora said there was no one in before, so he asked us to take them in. Oh, well, thanks anyway. I'm Deborah Gordon. Uh, Mike Dixon. Live over there with my wife and my daughter. Well, you must be doing well. Nice big house for such a young couple. Uh, yeah, right. Um, well, if there's anything that you need. What's happened? Stuart. Oh, uh, this is Mike. Hello. Nice Alan Gordon. All right. Excuse me. Who are they off? Our oh, Ruth. All oh, right. Uh, excuse me. Uh, was that your lad that caused all the commotion the other week? Yeah, I'm sorry. It won't happen again, yeah, I promise you. Yeah, and, uh, look, you know, like, I don't like coming over here complaining as soon as you moved in, like, but I could have been forced out of my home with all that trouble. He's got a dodgy heart, you know. Tell him I'm the half stocks you've had wrong. Yeah, all right, Bev. Yeah, he's had a lot of trouble. He's had pain, angina attacks, he's been out of breath. He's been on death's door a few times, and he's even had an out-of-body experience, haven't you? Look, Bev, it... His heart stopped, right, and he saw us all sitting around the bed, mortified. Then he travelled down this bright tunnel, and then he met the fella who used to live in his house before he did, who died Bev. after a car crash. I don't want the whole world and his wife knowing about my medical history, all right? People have got to know, Ron. He was really upset about that party business, you know. Like I say, won't happen again. Everything all right? Yeah. More new neighbours. Oh, hi, I'm Deborah. Ron. It's nice to meet everyone so soon. 
Which is your house? Oh, I don't live here. Um, but Ron is Mike's dad, and Josh is mine and Mike's lad. But, uh, I mean, I don't live with Mike because he's married to Rachel. But uh, Ron is doing a house swap with his daughter because, uh, well, Ray and Jesse have been staying with him, but it didn't work right, out. OK, but I'll see you later. Mm. Bye. In bread or what? <laughs> What's the score? Apparently no change. I think she's there for the duration. That is absolutely unacceptable. My sentiments exactly. Is she coming out? Yeah, don't think so. And look, while Ray's in there, I can put the next part of my plan into action. What is it? Come on, you can help me. Okay, love, we're going. She's tidied her room. That's supposed to make me forgive her. She knows she's done wrong. And grounding her will help her remember her. I'll never forget it if you treat me like this. We're going. I thought you were going to have a word. I would have done if you hadn't shouted down. Oh, I hate living here. Look, he's just a bit stressed out with all this Imelda Clough business. I'll talk to him. Why is it always me? I'd need the room for my children. There's three bedrooms. There were more people living here when Ron was our landlord, wasn't there, love? Would you like some more tea? No. No more tea, no more sandwiches. There's no point getting narky with a Max. Yeah. Because that sort of stuff won't work with me. Aha! You see what you've done now? I think I can talk it out of it if you just give me a bit more time. You've had time! I know you're talking about me. Now, no, hold on a minute. I think I can persuade her to come over to ours. Look, persuade her to go wherever you like. But I can promise you, look... Can you hear me? I'll give you till half four to get out of there. Otherwise, I'll get on to my solicitor and we'll see what he has to say. No more sandwiches. No more drink. Nothing. Hey, right. that's antagonising. Guess what I've just found? I'm busy. Phone points in one of the rooms. So? We can get on the net again, Divvy. Which room is it in? The little one. Our Kirsty's. There's a phone extension leaving that box. Sort it. No time for slacking. There's loads of stuff out there. OK. Yes, the net in me room. Well, I think it's out of order. It's a little insurance policy, that's all. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but what you get out of it? Relief from headaches. Uh oh Do you know, I really think that Max's approach is not helping things. Because in the Art of War book, when the Chinese talk about seeds, they say overcome your opponent by calculation. He's doing it all wrong. So what do you suggest, Ray? Well, in the bit about battle, they say, don't put the fire out. Let it burn out by itself. Use the gentle approach, you know, be... Have you got a problem with your looks? Not now, cos I'm, uh, I'm very good with locks. Oh, really? Well, you're going to have to be very good with this one, because... And I'm sorry, mate, but these things have to be done. What? Had to change the lock. But you locked us out the other week. Ray, you were never part of my plans to move in here. And I know Maxie will have spare keys, and I don't want him doing a deal with Jesse to get a moved in behind my back. So that is a bit... Well, it's wrong, isn't it? Listen, if he has a key, he might try and sneak Jesse in himself. Oh, we're tenants! We're friends! Yeah, but what Jesse's done has changed things. She's a bit unpredictable, to say the least. Michael? Can't wait till we get everything set out just the way I want it. Yeah, it won't be too long. They don't they'll like it here. It's too bad if they don't. I don't want complaining. It's too far from anywhere. Uh, spoons? Once they settle in, they'll love it. Happened to us when we moved as kids from Stanley Road out to West Derby. It just seemed far too posh. Fields, wide roads with orange street lamps. All we wanted was to get back to playing hide and seek in the back alleys and on the holler. <laughs> yeah, but after the war. Oh. Kids are still kids. Oh, you see, now it shrinks. Long lasting traumas for anything. The only one suffering long lasting trauma will be us bringing them all up. <laughs> still. We're not doing too bad, are we? Nah, I suppose not. Oh, not again. Yeah, OK, thanks. Bye-bye. No, before you ask, no, she's still in that room. Oh, it gets worse. Max, I know you said no to drinks or anything, but can she at least have a glass of water, please? I meant what I said. Look, we're talking about being humane. You give a dog a bowl of water. I don't want any of this. It's only a glass of water, Max. <sighs> All right, fine. But I don't want it to be made too comfortable up there. I mean, don't either of you understand where I'm coming from here? I want a house there as well, and hopefully we can get it all sorted out and get it moved into Ron's place. Well, I'm not too sure about that. Ron's changed the locks on the door. He doesn't want Jesse or me there. Well, where are you expected to live? Well, I think that... Uh... Please, don't think. No, and don't mention any of this to Jesse before I get her out of that room. 
Where are you taking that? My room. It's going in mine. I found it. Who's got the computer? It's the family's. But it goes in my room. Why? It was in yours last time. And it'll be there again. What? Just because you're older? <laughs> That's the first reason, yeah. And what's the second? I'm bigger than you. And the third is I put a password on the computer before I close it down in the old place. So if it's not in my room, I just might forget the password. Hello? Oh, get off this phone now! There's not a chance of seeing me, so stop phoning! Yeah, you said. I've been out and ordered the rope. Oh, just leave me alone! Well, if you can't live without me, then you're just gonna have to kill yourself. <sighs> Thank you for coming, but it won't make any difference. Which box did you put my phone in, eh? Some brown cardboard one. He's in reception. Oh, the christening in the new bed. Unless you passed it, that is. And when people round here started saying things about you because of killing that lad, Clint, I supported you. Why does the youngest always have to have the smallest room? It's to go with the size of your brain. A single episode of Brookside tomorrow evening at 8. A cocky new boy puts several noses out of joint and he's called Pratt. I'm saying nothing more except ER is next. Side. some pizza for lunch. Oh, I'm sick of all that stuff. We'll get Chinese then. And we only need a snack. <sighs> Hello? Oh, hi, Sarah. How are you? Dexter. Oh, um, just tell him I'm in a meeting, and that's all day, every day, if he phones back. Are you with me? OK, thanks. Changing the locks at this stage, Ron, has made things worse. Hey, listen, I am not running the risk of you giving him keys so Jesse can get chopped up in here. Look, I know this is your house, but this is my man you're talking about. Oh, what's going on here, eh? Like one of those resident meetings that Bing used to have? Jesse still won't move out to Maxie's. You're joking. And now Mr Dixon's changed the locks on this place, so even if we get me nan out, Ed and Ray have got nowhere to live. That is terrible. What have you done that for? Bev. Stay out of this one. I have blamed no one. Mike, when you tell me about this, did I blame anyone? Oh, nope. see? Look, I'm really sorry that Jessie and you, Ray, will have nowhere to stay once she's out of my place, but it really isn't my problem. And I've handed over all the house keys, so I haven't got a grand plan. Doesn't bother me, pal. I'm the keeper of the keys now. Look, none of this is open. Max will take legal action because he wants his place back, so you and Jessie will just have to find somewhere. Like? to talk to Jimmy. Are you going to get the police on to Jessie? No, no, she, I've told her she's got till half past four, then I'm consulting solicitors, but hopefully it'll be sorted out amicably by then. Oh, I've seen these things on the telly. They never turn out amicably. They get all nasty like those neighbours from hell and all that. Oh, I hope not. Look, all your grandmother has to do is to open the door and walk. Ah, and become homeless! No, I'm going to have a word with her. Hey, hey, I've told you, stay out. Listen, Ron, I am not having a poor woman being manhandled by heavies. Max, do you mind if I have a word with her? Your dad thinks he's grounding me. That's what's happening. For selling the bracelet, which was mine in the first place. <sighs> Biggest cob on ever, yeah? <sighs> well, I'm too old to be grounded, so I'm going out. Of course, I'm sure. He's not treating me like a kid. 
Which box did you put my phone in, I? A brown cardboard one. Oh, you are so getting on my nerves. Please stop the arguing. I need my phone. I need it hidden. Packed it. The house phone needs connecting. Ellie wants to call me. Well, do you know telepathy? Stuart, we're back on this afternoon. But he knows where it is. I don't. Look, she's only narky because Pete doesn't want it. Say one more word and I'll kill you. Just shut up, please. Bad enough. I've got a good mind to get round to work and leave you all to it. Oh, sorry. It wasn't my fault. Hey, now settle, everyone. Thank you for coming, but it won't make any difference. Nan, just hear Bevel, please. Yeah, because you know things are going to get dirty with this fella, don't you, love? I'm prepared for that. But we don't want to let it get that far. Jesse, come out. Perhaps we can come to some sort of agreement. Are you stupid? Don't you know that the minute I leave this place, we've got no bargaining power? She's right, you know. Well, Sir Jess. You are supposed to be helping. I am the go-between. I'm not on anyone's side. <sighs> Why did I let myself get taught into this yokel village swapping of houses? Uh, do you mind? That was my idea, and I do not like being called a yokel, thank you very much. Bev, listen, love, I know how you feel. I've been there. I mean, getting shifted from pillar to post. Thinking no one cares about you and the world doesn't want you. But they do. I mean, even he's probably got a bit of heart for someone in your situation, but he's got his kids to bring up, hasn't he? And, well, as nice as they are, you don't really want to live with them and Jackie, do you? I want to live in my own home. Well, if you like, I could give the builders a ring and, and get things moving along. Anything's better than staying here now when you're not wanted. Yeah, so come on. Let's get you out of here, eh? Have a nice hot bath, into some comfy clothes, and then I'll take you over the bar and treat you to a meal. Yeah. Uh, you could even come to the shelf if you like. I realise this isn't your fault. Yeah, so come on. Let's forget about this, eh? Get over to your nickies and we'll get it sorted. The bathroom next door will do. I don't want to put our nicky out. Well, you can't do that, can you? I want to change the locks. You've got to stay with her. He's changed the locks! Well, thank you very much for telling her. Well, I didn't know, did I? There you are. One telly video and DVD tuned and ready to go. Thank you. Right, let's get some pizza chips or whatever ordered. Kirsty? Didn't fancy anything. Pizza then. Don't argue. Alan? Yeah, large scotch with pepperoni. Same here. Ali? Where's he got to? He just went out. What do you mean out? On his bike. He's probably gone to Tomo's. He's hardly done a tap. You know, he's done the telly and put his posters up. Typical. He does as little as he can and then he gets off. Oh, don't worry about it. Everything will be all right. Laura phoned before. She asked me to meet her, so can I go out now? You're grounded. Will you tell him? It's embarrassing. Nearly 17. He's treating me like a little kid. Who are you calling he? All right. Let's take it all down. No, no, hang on. Do you think what you did with that bracelet was right? It was your nins. Was. Then it became mine. I didn't want it, so I sold it. When you sold your car, no one kicked off. Have you once thought of saying sorry? We're out of pocket 80 quid. Do you think we can afford that? All right. I'm sorry. You've got to mean it, love. I do. Well, I haven't heard any promise of paying back the 40 quid. You know I needed it for me holiday? You and that flaming holiday. Adele, just go and get ready to go out, will you? What? Thanks. You've just made me look stupid. And you're being unreasonable because of this visit to the solicitor. It's as if you're condoning what she's done. She knows we're upset about it, and she's sorry. No, but she doesn't sound like it. You know what they're like. You'll get your apology when everything's cooled down. Yeah, well, if it had me apology, I wouldn't have to cool down. You're pushing her into a corner. She's bound to strike out. Yeah, right, so it's my fault, is it? Oh, just chill out. I know you're under a bit of pressure, but it's like the solicitor said. There's nothing to worry about. Oh, hi, Sarah. Oh, what about him? He's in reception. No, he hasn't got an appointment at all. Look, um, can you get security to escort him out of the building immediately? Yeah, yeah, I'm positive. Look, yeah, I'll explain everything some other time, but if he comes back, call the police. Jesse, come on, open up. There's stuff in there I need, personal stuff. I believe you changed the lock on the new house. Yeah. Well, it needed to be done. Why? Because I wanted to move on, Jesse. I wanted to move into my house without any inconveniences. It's always a surprise when you see a side of somebody you never knew they had. Look, can I get my stuff, please? Of course you can. I know how important your property is to you. Thank you. Those are the stairs you went down terrified on that night you were burgled. 
when you were prepared to do anything to protect your family. Because we'd been through something else together, hadn't we, Ron? Bound and gagged together, do you remember? We saw fear in each other's eyes when those other thugs terrorised us. And when people round here started saying things about you because of killing that lad, Clint, I supported you. Yeah, me. Because I could understand fear and terror. And I knew that when you pulled that trigger, you must have believed it was kill or be killed. Jess. There was something else I understood. A common bond of friendship that I really thought we had. <laughs> and then at the first opportunity, you put two people out on the street. Yeah, but you won't be out on the street, will you? You're going to be... Where? Be honest, Ron. You don't care, do you? Do you? It was all just getting too much for me. We were under your roof because we'd been burnt out of our own house. People used to help out in that years ago. When this country was great because people cared about their neighbours, their community. But you, you've caught on to the new way of going on, haven't you? Look after number one. Well, you can get your stuff and you can go down and tell Max I'm coming out. And then you can be very proud of your nice new house and that you've made two people homeless. Longer and we'll be done. God, I'll sleep well tonight. Really? Oh, we're christening the new bed. Unless you passed it, that is. <laughs> Never. Still can't believe we've done it. Not quite, you said. I'll be unpacking it. Sunk all our money into this and the business. Our money? Your redundancy then. It's a joke. I am grateful, you know. I'd sooner spend it on the business than having it sit in the bank account. Still can't believe you did it for me. Hey, if the lady wants a business, the guy gets her one. I'm a bit scared now, though. Seems like it's too much. Now you tell me. Nothing wrong with being a bit scared. It's a big step. I mean, most people just move house, but doing that and buying... Hey, now, stop it right there. We've got a good business plan, and we're dealing with something that people will always want. So stop the flapping. Come on. Katie, I need to speak to Gary right away. Well, yes, I do know, but... Well, yes, it is important. Oh, look, it's all right, it doesn't matter. Um, can you just ask him to call me as soon as he comes out, please? Ta. Okay, bye. Oh! Oh. You okay? I won't be bullied by anyone. And you're going to come over and stay at ours? Speak to Jimmy first. You are strong, you know, Nam. I've had to be. I spent a lot of years on my own, and you get used to having to fight your own corner. After your granddad died, I at least had your dad to help me. I miss him every day. You see, it is easier having a man alongside you, and I know that sounds old-fashioned, but it's the way I am. That's why I had to do all those investments years ago. You know, the shares and that. Because I knew once your granddad died, I'd have to find some means of supporting myself, and that's what I've done. Sounds logical to me. And, hey, I'm not mixing it, but you make sure you don't have to rely on a man, even in marriage. You can love Jerome all you like, but having your own money makes you feel more equal. Right, I'll help you downstairs with the rest of your stuff, and uh, I'm glad we didn't have to go to legal on this. Jess, go on a minute, love. Listen, uh, I've had a rethink, and I was out of order. Ray and I are going for a coffee while you talk to Jimmy. No, look, you don't have to go to Jimmy's. There's room for you to mind. But you've made it perfectly clear that you don't really want us. Come on, Jess, can't a man see the end of his ways? Look, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done what I did. You can come back to ours. No point in cutting up our noses. And you can stay for as long as you like. It makes sense, then. I'm still very independent. What's with all the faces? Don't even ask. Oh, look what I've got. We got the money? Pick a country, any country in the world. What's that doing in here? Great, isn't it? Oh, not in here, it isn't. Who put those up in here? Our Ali struck them up. Well, they're coming down. This is my room. Out! Go on. Right, front room with that one, Michael. All right. Where's on me, wait. Yeah. Could you get that other box of mine, please? Here, allow me. Oh. I'll show you what else I want. Oh, 
Me and I shotgunned our rooms while you were downstairs sulking. I was not sulking. And the rooms are sorted before we left the old place. Do we have to have met a tarsal man in the house? Look, Ali isn't going to like having the small room. You won't have to. That's yours, and well, you know it. <sighs> Why does the youngest always have to have the smallest room? It's to go with the size of your brain. Well, you should be living in a shoebox, then. Stuart, you're in the small room. No ifs or buts. You know, in PSC we did about this little thing called a democracy. Yeah. Well, the problem with democracy is everyone wants their own way. Don't argue, son. Put that in Ali's room. God, I'm always being bossed around. Wait till I'm 16, yeah? No one will argue with me then. And I'm getting a flat. Yeah? Try getting one in the North Pole. Don't keep taking the bait, love. No, more. He's done me head hiding me phone. Look! He's put me charging here, the biff. Where's my phone? We already squared this with the union, so no. Don't be taking any hardline approach. It's not necessary. No one's trying to get one over on you. It's normal workplace stuff. We're management, they're workers. It's a law in business. It's nothing personal. Oh, I've got to go. Ta da. Can't that Kevin Mallon make any decisions? Do you get in touch with the phone people? Kirsty, give me five minutes, will you? You see, now this is what I could do with a smoke. He's going to have the place out on strike. Stop worrying. I'm fine. Just need a smoke, that's all. Do deep breathing or something. Here. Have a chewing. I said I'm fine. We don't want you smoking again. You've done so well. Oh, you're not going to start again, are you, Dad? Look, will everybody just back off? But you said you were finished. Stuart, I know I did, but I don't need everyone keep reminding me. Stuart, go and put the kettle on, love. Why is it always me? What about the phone? Kirsty, do me a favour! Don't keep on, love. Well, in on your nan for squatting, like, what's that Ron Dicko like? Oh, no. He was just being a biff. I mean, I gave it to a good start. <laughs> she talks a lot of sense to me now. Like what? Just this and that. So what do you reckon the name? I'm not sure. Well, Jimmy's sorted, so that's one good thing. What's happened? What do you mean? I just thought you looked funny when I mentioned Jimmy's name. No, no. Everything's cool with him. Good. So here's the drop. We call in and see your mum for a few days, and then we do Europe. Which bits? Somewhere warm, somewhere where I can go topless. <laughs> Would you ever go with everything all off? Totally, but naked. Yeah. Nah, I don't think I'd want all the other fellas getting jealous. <laughs> or all the other girls getting ideas. <laughs> hey, I'm all yours, remember. I think it's great we can get off somewhere, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to afford it. Well, I can lend you extra money if you need it. No, I, I want to be independent. Nicky, I'm your fella. I can help you out. No, but I feel better if I can pay my own way. Don't worry, though. I'll still be going. Just under my own steam. Dad? Yeah? I'm sorry. What for? Everything. <laughs> oh, I. Yeah, I and I'm really going to try and get it together. Are you winding me up? No, look, I don't want you to start smoking again. It's you that puts me on him. Come on. Cup array. Brilliant! Found it! Still got charge and all. Thank God for that. Where was it? Any. Yeah, it's me. Because oh, my pain of a little brother hid me mobile. I have to get this bed made. And we're not connected to the villa yet. No. No, he hasn't. I thought he might have left a message or something, but... Fancy finishing it with a text message. What a stiff, eh? Just wait till I see him. Yeah? What time's team on? You've not long had your dinner. What's the best way for Ellie to get here? On a broomstick. Mum, tell him. What's the directions? Your dad's best at that sort of thing. Give it here, I'll tell her. All right, so, um, you're going down the drive, right? Right, phone will be on in about half the, an hour. Uh, jolly oh, pub, uh, I found mine now. Great. Yeah. Does that mean we might see a bit chirpier now? And, um, if someone finished with you by text message, okay. you'd be a bit miffed, uh, wouldn't you? Right, like, this is the lag that you weren't bothered about. <laughs> I was and then, um, about him. And then I cut through to me. Well, he's given her the wrong... Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Why can't you be normal, eh, you idiot? Ellie, I'll have to call you back when we've got a proper line out. Bye. Oh. Stuart, go downstairs, mate. Make yourself useful. Anyway, I thought it didn't matter either way with this guy. Oh, he was different. Intelligent, smart, funny. He goes and does something like this. I don't understand it. That's lads for you. But why? <laughs> what? Oh, no, nothing. 
What do you mean? Alan, go down and bring the bathroom stuff up, will you? Let him finish what he was going to first, Mum. Do you have to wear that? If I want to wear bitch on me shirt, that's my business. Yeah, and what about blokes that you meet? I'm not going to stop wearing this just because some fella feels threatened. Well, don't think you can keep relationships going wearing it. It's only a wear. No, Kirsty, it's an attitude. Even better. Now I'll definitely keep wearing it. You handle that well. <sighs> the junk I've held on to since the fire. Am I included in that? Don't be soft. Well, I thought after our chat, you know. You should have guessed by the way I dug my heels in next door that I don't give in easy. Well, you make me sound like a challenge. Well, every marriage is, isn't it? And we're both old enough to know it needs work in us. Oh. Well, uh, I'll be trying harder. Because I know I don't fit into your category as the ideal man. I wasn't looking for the ideal. Well, it's easy if you end up with me, isn't it? You should never look for the ideal, because you'll always be disappointed. Well, I'd Rainy is second best. And I always hoped that you'd be my ideal. Weren't Rainy and me both second best to Sylvia? Well, I suppose Sylvia was up there as an ideal, yes, but... Well, you said I'd be disappointed, didn't you? I've been happy with you, Jess. And if we work at it, we can both be happier than we think we could be. If you, uh, you still want to try. Of course. I'm still here, aren't I? Oh. I'll take you out for tea. We can have a proper talk, yeah? I've, uh, I've really missed you, you know. Alan. I'm not there, love. When did you take him out? Yesterday. And you'd have a secret stash of cigarettes somewhere, and that seemed to be the most likely place. That transparent, am I? I thought today would be stressful for all sorts of reasons, and you might weaken. Useless, aren't I? First day here, and I'm cracking. You'll get stronger. I know you will. All I'm saying is, you shouldn't undermine me. You can't always be right, love. Is it really worth you going out this time? No, yeah, I've got perms booked for the Wood Sisters and the Mum. They're going away. No, oh, William. I was just thinking maybe we could spend the rest of the day together, you know. Why? In case the police swoop and bang you up. Don't be so dramatic. The solicitor couldn't have been clearer. It's part of a routine inquiry. Yeah. And I know all about their routine inquiries. Oh, not that Mickey Edwards thing again. No, I was just thinking about our Christie, you know, um... I used to get into trouble and the police would come and do a sort of, um, routine inquiry sort of thing. I thought Chrissy was famed for never having been near getting caught. Look, anyway, my point is, the solicitor said she'd be surprised if you were contacted again. In their opinion. Marty, you had nothing to do with the Melda Clough going missing, did you? You know I didn't. So stop worrying. You're in the clear. That's what the Birmingham Six thought. Now you are going over the top. I'll see you later. Things happen, you know. Oh, still alive, then? You're pathetic. Call yourself a man. You're just a worm. Oh, you make my flesh crawl. Just shut up and listen. I've told you to stay away. I'm not interested. Never mind, don't. I've told you. I do not feel anything for you. I don't care what happens to you, so... Oh, why don't you just stop all this bleating about going off to kill yourself and for heaven's sake, do it. All right, Aaron. I'll be just fine, mate. Yeah, I think so. Just wish I could have a bigger room, right? Really. Uh, your time will come, son. Hi, hi, it's our Ruthie. Go and tell your mum quick. Debbie! Deb! Hello, love. You all right? Hello, mate. Can you pay Dad? It's £12.50, sorry. You skin again, are you? Hey, sis. Thanks for the flowers, love. Oh, my God, Ruth, what's happened? You have to take the baby for us, will you? You all right, sis? Hey, what's going on then? Sean. Sure. Oh, bloody hell. Has he done that? I didn't want to get you involved. What exactly did he do? He kicked off. He was showering and swearing and called me all sorts of dead abusive. I was going to get the police. 
And Luke was terrified. Where is he now? Oh, look, forget it, Dad, please. It's in the state of your face. I'll find him. Alan, no. He's not going to get away with that. Oh, just leave it, Dad. Look, I'm sorry, Mum. I thought you'd broken a tooth. I'll break his bloody neck. Now tell me where he is. No. I want to have a word. That's I've seen all. your words before. No, Dad, I don't know. I've left him. It's all over. You what? She doesn't need this now. Come on, let's get you inside. I don't want Dad to do anything rash. Well, I can hardly go away with your own, can I? Not with all this mess that I've caused. You think that you've joined the Toffs. That's why you're defending Gary Parr. You and Max think you're better than the rest of us. And you are? Well, I know who I am. Who are you? <laughs> your boss. The new owner. Let me in. Okay. I mean it, Sean. I'll call the police. I want to see me, son. That next Brookside is next Wednesday at 8. Next tonight in the first of a new series, the glamorous life to be had in Britain between the wars, enjoyed by Bobby and Mary Cunningham-Reed, owners of the real country house. Ready to tell me? What's the point? Do you know how long I have to mind Luke for? I need a bath in the water. It's still not getting hot, you know. How can you even think of having a bath now with everything to do? <gasps> what exactly has happened? He hit me, Mum. Look, I, I don't want Dad doing anything rash. Yeah, exactly. I can never guarantee that. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm annoyed. I phoned earlier. The back here, Mum. What's up? I'm wasting a whole lot of time and effort being interviewed over this Mark Dixon incident. Interviewed? By who? By my peers and the practice manager. Oh, well, at least it'll get it over and done with. No, it won't. No, no, this is the NHS. Probably end up in a court in The Hague. Slobodan Milosevic's seat will still be warm. <laughs> You've been busy. Oh, it just felt like a clear out. Sweeping away the past, eh? Oh, something like that. But not all of it, I hope. Oh, just the out-of-fashion stuff. You're still in. Mm. Good for that. <laughs> Do you fancy a coffee? Mm. Can't this Dixon thing be sorted out before it gets really silly? Why don't you have a word with him? No, I'm not allowed to. I can't have anything to do with him. At least if he collapses in the street, I can step over him with a clear conscience. <laughs> you know, I know that I shouldn't have hit him, but it was self-defence. Now the whole thing's been blown completely out of all proportion. Which will come out during the interviews. You'll see. Once he's had his 15 minutes in front of a panel, he'll let it drop. <sighs> but Sean shouldn't be allowed to get away with hitting you. Have you talked to the police? There's a special unit that deals with... With what? Well, I don't like saying battered wives, but I suppose that's what I am. Anyway, it's, um, it's a place that records what's happened. They take photographs and keep a record. And will you do that? I don't know. They said I can do that, and it doesn't necessarily mean you'll be charged. I just don't know yet. How long has it been going on? What does this over mean? Where are the lads? No trainers to trip over, so they must be out. Business as usual. Just tell us exactly what's happened, will you? I'm so glad I've got you two. That's one decision I got right. Just pity I didn't pick the right husband. What's happened? Sean's drinking. Well, for the last year or so, it's been getting out of hand. Why didn't you tell us? Because it's my problem. You've got your own lives to lead. I'm a married woman with my own family. He's still our daughter. Has he hurt you? 
Uh, no more than he's done in the past. And I don't have to go to hospital, if that's what you mean. I don't believe I'm hearing this. I'm going to go and see him. Look, Dad, no, just let it all settle down. She's right. Let's just take this one step at a time. How much does Luke know? Well, he knows we've been falling out a lot. And he knows the police have been and warned his daddy to behave himself. You had to call the police? No, the neighbours did. The water's still not getting hot. Where's Luke? He's helping me look from the phone. What exactly do you want me to do, Ruth? Nothing drastic. You go and find out how the immersion heater works and I'll make us a sandwich. Dad, please stay in the house. Yeah, all right. This end looks straight to you. It looks fine. That's a bit great, having your own place, mustn't it? Not having to worry about getting changed, just being able to slob around for half the day. You do that anyway. <laughs> yeah, but not as much as I'd like. I mean, I've got to cover up, haven't I, because of Jimmy? Yeah, well, it is his house. No, I know that, but... Where is he, anyway? Has he gone to Helen's? Um, I don't think so. I think he'll um, be keeping out of their way for a bit, actually. Why? To fill them out? No, it's not that. I've gone and put my foot in it with her. Oh, why? Just opened my big mouth, haven't I? I'm told I want to thought about an amateur take on his illness. Does Jimmy know? Yeah, he knows. I could so wish something like this was going to happen, couldn't I? What's your mum to say about all this? I haven't told him. Nicky? The thing is, I don't know what I'm going to do now. What do you mean? Well, I can hardly go away with your own, can I? Not with all this mess that I've caused. This box isn't mine. Why bring it down, then? Put it in Stuart's room. And take Luke out for a walk while we're talking. My mobile isn't properly charged yet. Just give us five minutes. Take him round the close, and if anyone phones here for you, I'll call you in. Go on, Kirs, please. On. She doesn't look too happy. Boyfriend trouble. Have we fixed it? Yeah. Amazing device, a switch. I can't have him doing this to her. Oh, look, leave it, Dad. Oh, hold on a second. You, he's hit you, thrown you out of the house, and you're saying I should just leave it? Yeah, because you'd only make things worse. And he didn't throw me out, I left. The police know all about it. The last thing we need today of all days is you getting arrested. You don't get arrested for trying to sort your daughter's marriage out. You do if you go about it by putting your son-in-law in hospital. You're all wound up with the move and giving up smoking. This isn't the time. But you've given up smoking? <laughs> yeah. How long? Two weeks. Isn't he doing well? Oi, do you mind? Well, you are. So if you don't want me to go and see him, what do you want me to do? Stay calm. It's quick as five minutes I've ever known. No, Ellie. Not yet. No, I'll come over to yours. Wait a minute. Where exactly do we live? Five Brookside Close Manor Park. Did you hear that, Ellie? I think we're still in Liverpool, but I can't be sure. Could be a money back land for all I know. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a ring back later. The hot water working, yeah? Just give it an hour or so, yeah? I can't. I've got to go to Ellie's to pick up my car. Who's going to take me? Like anyone's got time. Well, how am I going to get there? Ever heard of public transport? But it's miles and miles away. It's not miles and miles. One more bus than usual and you're wherever you want to be. And it is a great new house. Yeah. Once it's decorated, it'll feel like we've been here forever. You stay here for long, then? Yeah, if you don't mind. As long as you like. Sure never hit you before. Let's not talk about him anymore. Show Luke and me your room. Oh, it's just a mess. Well, I'll help you get it sorted. Come on, Luke. We trusted that man with our daughter. How dare he hit her? Don't worry. He won't get away with it. Hiya. Hi. Mm -hmm. It's good to see somebody enjoying his work. Yeah, he seems to be doing well. Glad to hear it. How's things with you? Oh, great. Apart from your family. Oh, what's that now? Oh, just the usual stuff. I mean, your father, he's driving me mad at trying to locate this missing box. And your brother, well, he's feeling triumphant at dragging Gary Parr in front of an interview panel. You can be such a prass. Why won't he just let it drop? I think he's sensing victory. Which is what? A payoff? Getting Gary reprimanded? My own theory, for what it's worth, is he hasn't got anything else better to do. I mean, if he had a decent job, that would concentrate his mind on more positive things than negative. You haven't been talking to Bev about him, have you? No. Why? She suggested that I make him manager of Bar Rookie. What? Exactly. We could put him in charge of trying to find my dad's missing box. That's about his mark. Oh, well, nobody knows him better. Anyway, good news. Oh, always welcome. Bev has offered to babysit tonight so we can go out. She is a crafty one, eh? That's to get round, as you know, so I'll let her stand down as bar manager. I think we should take advantage while we can. Okay, where? Here, actually. 
Lance could do with the support. Oh, you really know how to give a girl a good time? I have my moments. <laughs> how do you fancy watching synchronised swimmers? Well, now, I've had some propositions in my life, but... Why are you eating? Well, it depends what they look like. Well, not stopping them being men, is there? No, I suppose not. Hey, do you know what? We could even put a few tables around the pool. If you're both absolutely miserable, just get back together again. But what if he's not miserable? Well, then phone him. I mean, just ask him how he is. I can't go chasing after him, Ruth. Well, maybe he wants you to. Well, then why doesn't he call me? Well, I've been there too. Look, why didn't you text him with your home number? I mean, just to keep in touch. I could do, couldn't I? Yeah. I think I will. Well, yeah, there you go. There's no real crisis, is there? Ruth, Pete's away at university meeting loads and loads of new people. New women. How worse can it get? I'm sorry, Ruth. <sighs> Look, it's not your fault my marriage is messed up. But you can learn a lesson from me. Yeah, do my if I ain't drunk, eh? Well, yeah, and stick to your plans to go into uni. Out of all my regrets, that's probably tops. You can still do it, you know. Oh, yeah, with Luke in the crash. Yeah, and I think of what I ditched for Sean. Done. Yeah. I mean, what a brilliant guy, eh? He's smart, funny, makes me laugh. If only I'd stuck with him, gone to uni, and not ruined my life getting pregnant. Oh, you don't really feel like that, do you, Ruth? Oh, Luke's adorable. Oh, no, it's not Luke. Oh, no, it's everything that comes with him. I don't know what I'll do if Pete doesn't get in touch. I don't believe you. One minute you're going on this big, fantastic trip around the world with your boyfriend, and the next you're having second thoughts. Best laid plans and all that. Who else knows? No one. Because <sighs> Jimmy hasn't said nothing. Mind you, probably wouldn't even notice. He's that wrapped up with him and hell. I've never seen him so happy. Sometimes I forget he's a nut job. Don't call him that, Em. He's genuinely ill and he needs help. Yeah, and he's on medication and he's getting lots of help. What would happen if I were near? Don't be stupid. You've got to go with your own. And what do you know? I'm sorry. Look, I don't want to talk about it now, all right? Not again. Hello? Kevin, haven't you sorted it yet? You should have switched that off. You're supposed to be on two days' holiday. Look, if you authorise an overnight for Johnny Dias, yeah? That means his wagon's still on Teesside tomorrow. I just yeah. wanted him to concentrate on the move, just for a couple of days. Oh, looks like Luke's finished all the milk, sorry. Could you pop round to the garage for some? A better idea. Why don't you take a break? Take Dad with you and I'll get some tea sorted out for it all. Well, that is a good idea, if you don't mind. Well, it's the least I can do. Does Luke know he's staying here tonight? Yeah, he thinks it's great. It's all a big adventure to him. <laughs> Look, thanks for being so understanding, Mum. I just wish we were better organised. You and Luke will have to go in Ali's room. Well, we'll manage. Will you manage in the future without Sean? If that's what you decide to do. We'll be all right. Well, at least he's got a good job and can support his son. You make sure you get everything you're entitled to. Yeah, I will do, if it comes to it. I just hope he doesn't fight me over custody. You think he might? Well, I don't know, but he does think the world of Luke. It's just a pity he knocks his mum about then, isn't it? That'll go against any custody claim he has. So Max tells me that you're going ahead with this complaint against Dr Parr? Yeah, that's you right, I am. we both got to go in front of a panel, but he's going to get what he deserves. Which is what? I'm fine. Reprimand, whatever they do. Are you after the payout over this? No, Jackie. I just want justice. I want him to be told that he has to do his job properly in future and not have another family have to go through what we've had to go through with Beth. Come off it, mate. The only reason you're doing this is to get petty revenge and the chance to get your hands on some easy cash. Yeah, you're entitled to your opinion, but I know better. Well, why don't you just drop it and get on with your life instead of complaining that you're always being badly done to? I'm defending me daughter. Yeah, it was now fit and well and wouldn't thank you for being denied access to the nearest medical centre. Who says that's going to happen? Use what little common sense you've got. Why should they risk having you and your family on their books if there's a chance that you're going to get them disciplined every time you get the hoof? You know what? That is typical of you these days. Meaning what? Meaning you think that you've joined the Toffs. That's why you're defending Gary Parr. You and Max think you're better than the rest of us. Oh, what colour is the sky in your world, eh, mate? Thanks for bringing the mayor around. Yeah, but I won't be bothering in future. Oh, well, fine. It suits me. And I want my car keys back as soon as possible, all right? My dad reckons that even though your dad might be innocent, it still doesn't mean he's not going to spend the rest of his life in jail. Oh, thanks. That really cheers me up. 
What are you talking to your dad about it for? No, he said you read about these things all the time. I mean, you've just got to be grateful that they don't hang people anymore. Will you stop talking like that? And what you mean, might be innocent. Of course he hasn't done anything. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I mean, somebody has to be surprised every time they catch a murderer. They're only human beings, aren't they, Dan? This is my dad we're talking about, Laura. My dad. Oh, all right, then. Don't get so stroppy. Oh, it's not me that interviewed him for murder, is it? It isn't even a murder. There's no body. And anyway, the police only wanted to interview my dad because he was honest enough to admit hitting her. That's all. Do you both work here? No, just me. And you are? Well, I know who I am. Who are you? <laughs> Your boss. The new owner. Um, I'll see you later then, OK? Right. I'm sorry. Not a very good start. You here on your own? Yeah. Until? About eight o'clock, then the Aunt Powell comes in. Don't be so nervous. Adele. I'm not going to judge you on one snap visit. Right, thanks. Sorry, I was expecting someone dead fat. <laughs> oh, I mean, I know you've been here before, but... Oh, sorry, I'm not normally like this. Um, I really like working here. And how long have you worked here? Just since about four o'clock. No, I mean, how long have you had the job? Oh, a couple of months, and I haven't had any time off. I really need to save some money from a holiday and to buy some stuff, but oh, I'm not normally like this, honest. <laughs> Don't worry, Adele. You can stay here as long as the job's being done properly. I started working in my uncle's garage when I was about your age, so I know what it's like. It's a really good job. I mean, I haven't had any to compare it to, but I really like it. <laughs> well, shouldn't put a stop to that. Well, we'll take a notice of him. You'd be glad to know he's got nothing to do with the business. Oh, so it's not between you, then? No, see, I've got a proper job. And with a boss like her, that takes up a lot of time, I can tell you. Right, well, we'll leave you to it. Do you know if the bar across the road does food? Um, well, I don't think it's open till tonight. I mean, this evening. Well, I mean, every evening. But, um, there's a place a couple of doors down the shelf, and I've heard that's quite good. But I don't really know if that's open, either. Right. Oh, bye. Uh, so... What do you reckon Jerome's going to say when he finds out you're having second thoughts about going to travel? I think they would be too happy. So what are you doing then, Nick? I mean, if he goes travelling on his own, anything could happen. I know you mean well, then, but I have thought this all through, you know. Yeah, I know you have. And look, I'm sorry about what I said about Jimmy. I know we can't help it. I know you don't mean him any harm, but it just bugs me when people say stuff like nutter and all that. Well, if I really thought he was a nut, I wouldn't be living here, would I? I'm glad you're not here. Are you? Yeah, of course I am. I'm dead proud of you. Honestly? Of course I am, yeah. I'm chuffed a bit so you stuck at all your nail courses and everything. Just done everything right, didn't you? Keeping your head down and getting on with it. Mm. Oh, thanks, Nick. That really means a lot to me. We don't actually open till seven, but as you've just moved in, cheers. Thanks. Now, if you do want a meal, just show us. Thank you. Hey, do you reckon you should meet you now? Here's the new house. Yeah, cheers. And sorting out Ruth's marriage problems. Mm. If only that could happen. It was doomed from the moment she chose Sean over going to university. It's a stupid crush. It changed her life forever. She should have a good job now and be living life to the full instead of... Presenting us with a lovely grandson? Yeah, well, I don't begrudge for a second, you know that. But it's all about timing. I mean, Luke could have waited a few years. And chosen a better father. So what she told you? Well, she'll never go back to him. And, you know, she's worried he's going to fight for custody. I have no chance. Well, it's her decision and she's worried about it. Then there's the house to sort out, who pays for what. I said she can stay with us as long as she needs to. He's not going to get away with hitting her. Alan, we're the grown-ups. We have to be sensible. Yeah. And while the police are involved, we should leave it to them. Yeah, not if he bothers her again, though. Well, then she'll have to find out about a restraining order. You know, you try and bring them up right, protect them as kids and then... The first opportunity, they go and marry some drunken nutter. He wasn't a drunken nutter when she married him. Yeah, but there was always something about him, though, wasn't there? Listen, do you want to eat here? Save her of doing tea. Yeah, why not? We're entitled to eat out tonight, with the house still being in chaos. We should ask the girls. I'll give them a ring. And I'll just nip to the toilet. Hey. Despite all this trouble with Ruth, I do love the house. I'm glad, after all it's cost. And I know I'll get on to you about bringing work home and all that, but I really appreciate how much you do to provide for us. Deb, that's the most embarrassing thing you've ever said. I mean it. But I just do what I have to do to keep you lot off of my back. I'll just nip to the toilet. You give the girls a ring and find out what they want to do, yeah? Yeah. Hey. Hey. 
go. We won't follow you to the toilet now. <laughs> he's not your problem, and anyway, he's got Helen now. Yeah, which is the problem. She thinks she knows all about him. Well, you should until I put her straight. And what have you done now? She thinks she knows all about his condition, right? Well, she skimmed through a few books. But I had to know she could cope if he had one of his bad do's. I don't think she could. Most definitely not, no. Then that just sent Jimmy spiraling down again, and then, well, anything could happen. I don't want to be in India or somewhere and find out he's gone well over the edge. What do you mean by over the edge? All that roof business again, all locking you both in the extension, is that what you mean? Yeah, things like that. It's just, I told Jimmy that I'd had a row with Helen and I think it's set him back a bit. Can't leave him the way he is, though. No, it's all my fault. Hello? Oh, it's you. Yeah, I'll come. But I don't know about our roof. Yeah, hold on, I'll just ask her for you. Ruth? It's me mum wondering whether you want to join them for a meal. Hi, it's nice of you, but I can't. Ruth's asleep. Yeah, exhausted. Oh, uh, well, I'll open a dinner something. I'm not that hungry, to be honest. Beans on toast to do me. No, no sign of either of them. Yeah, all right, have a lovely time. Yeah, I'm fine. Bye. I thought it just might have been Pete. Look, if he's worth worrying about, I'll contact you or you him. Go and meet Mum and Dad and have a lovely time. Are you sure you'll be all right if I go out? Of course I will. I'll appreciate the peace with Luke being flat out for the night. All right. But if there's any calls... I'll take a message. <laughs> Hi. All the better for hearing your voice. Gone, then? Yes. Probably thinking my dad's a murderer and I'm a right divvy. Why, what did they say? They never asked. Mm. I was only winding you up before, you know, Del. I think I your dad's all right. I'm sure he's very grateful. So, with you having to give that 40 quid back for the bracelet, how far are we off this holiday money? Miles. Just keeps getting more and more with more people <sighs> dropping out. They're all stupid. I mean, why couldn't they just forge the letter to the travel agents like you did? For all the good it's done me. Gonna have to get more shifts here to earn more money. Are they all right with you, really? The new owners? Yeah. I think they're dead nice. Good. And they didn't mind me reading my magazines, then? Well, they never said, but I think it might be best if you didn't hang around here too much at first, just till they get used to the place. They'll be dead keen at first. OK. They're not gonna come in here tonight again, are they? Not till late. They want to meet Leanne. Oh, hiya. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Give us a packet of fags, will you? And if anyone asks you, you haven't seen me. Oh, no. Well, if you're trying to avoid your wife... You haven't. Toilet over there not good enough for you? No, I was just... No. Cigarettes by any chance? Oh, Alan, don't give in now. You're doing so well. I know, I know. If he comes in here asking for cigarettes, I want to know about it. Let's go and get our meal. At least you weren't reading the magazines. Mm. Maybe the box is not the thing to look for, but the content's inside. Oh, you might be right. Mm. I'll ask him. Well, he was very defensive when I did. Must be something very precious to him. I'm Sean. I, I want to talk to you and I want to see Luke. Yeah, he's asleep and you're legless. Do I have to call the police? I'll lock you up this time. Let, let me in. Look, I mean it, Sean. I'll call the police. I want to see me, son. If you think anything of him, you leave him in peace. And me. You! You're just scum the way you've been. You deserve a good hide you, do. Get off me, you drunken idiot! What do you think you're going to achieve? Oi! What are you doing here? Well, that's my business, isn't it? It's a good job I am, though. Look at you, man. You're wasted. Be back for me, son. Hang on a minute. Well, my boss is in here. It's just a cardboard box, Jack. It originally had corned beef in it. You can't miss it. Ming it. I know what Nicky told you, and it's not fair. 
me asking you to. I think I should be the judge of that. But I can't trust myself. I know, he calls me all the time, but you keep telling me there's nothing you can do about it. What? You don't have to wait too long because that next Brookside is coming up in just a sec. Then see you later, Paul. Cheers. Is he all right? Uh, yeah. He wants to know where his dad is. Said you he heard his voice. But he didn't see us. Well, no. I don't think he saw the fighting. He's in the back room. Are you hurt? Me? No, no, no. I'm fine. But I'm sorry you had to get involved in all this. Listen, it's fine. Honestly, forget about it. If you hadn't have been there, I couldn't have stopped him. He'd have got Luke. Yeah, but he didn't, did he? Listen, I'll stick around for a bit, okay? Just in case. Y yeah. Well, maybe you should go before Mum and Dad come back. It'll be the third degree when they see you again. You're messing. You're Marty. Well, what did the busiest say? Are they having them in again? You behave. I'm telling you, that waiter was a bit of a you-know-what. What? You know, one of them, are, <laughs> one of them woofter types. <laughs> yeah, and so what he was. Yeah, well, there's no smoke without fire. Now, I don't want to cast aspersions, but it does beg me to ask the question, why did he take a job working around kids? Excuse me. Yeah, but we don't know what he's into, do we? Plus, he did build that pond in the back garden, didn't he? Hello, Trevor Jordash, part two. Excuse me. Listen, love, I'm trying to have a conversation here. Stroppy me. Are they going to charge him or what? I don't suppose your boss would be too pleased keeping customers waiting while you take personal calls? Hang on a minute. Well, me boss is in here! I know I said I wouldn't be long, but I've got to set up for the morning. <laughs> it's a bit much you giving me a hard time for working late, Gary. Yeah, I know. I've had the mobile off in case Dexter starts bombarding me with texts again. No, total silence, thankfully. Maybe it's got the message. Yeah, look, I'm going to have to get on or it's going to take me all night. Gary, can you just hang on a minute? I used to run that bar over there, so, um, management, noose. <laughs> My role is mainly supervisory. Oh, great. In that case, you think you could supervise a big tidy up, starting with a wipe down of all the shelves? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll get a Delta to do it in the morning. No, actually, I think it's a job that requires management, mouse. Fine, Mrs. Gordon. Oh, call me Debbie. I'm sure we'll be like one big happy family, as long as we all do our jobs properly. Yeah, I'm sure we will. I'm going to be about half an hour yet. Sorry. So we settling into your house all right, then? Oh, it's all a bit up in the air at the moment. A bit. A bit of friendly advice. Watch out for Jackie Farnham. Who's that? Well, in that Bev one, right? They ruined my bar. Hard as nails. She swung around with gangsters and all kinds. She lives down your road. Get away. Yeah? She lives at number seven or number eight, and they're swapped. 
Now, do you see here? I shouldn't really be saying anything like, but... Go on. Jackie's dad, Ron. He shot her boyfriend. You what? He shot him? Yeah. He's only just got out of jail. He lives down your way and all. On the close. And he's not the only murderer from what I've been hearing. On the close. Well, it's not really my place to say anything, especially when it involves Adele. No, you've got to tell us now. Well, all I know is, there was this little girl and she went missing from the school where Adele's dad works. Now, the busies have had him in for questioning. Of course, it could just be a total coincidence. I might be wrong anyway. You can't go around worrying about there being a psycho on your doorstep. Can you? Are you sure you're all right? Okay, well, don't walk too late. I'll see you later. Bye. Sorry, you were saying? Oh, just to let you know, I have locked up, but I can't get the bag. The alarm to go on for some reason. Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine for one night. Everything all right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've just been stood up by my wife. Nice work bringing us here. Not one but two killers for neighbours. You know, I don't remember the estate agents mentioning that. I think we take anything our friend Leanne says with a pinch of salt. Oh, yeah. Hey, just enjoy your meal. Yeah? Fine, thanks. Uh, sorry, I'm Jackie Varnum. Me and my husband's in the restaurants. You must oh, be the new neighbours. Yeah. yeah, I'm Debbie, oh, yeah. Alan, Kirsty. Three more inside. Oh, you got four kids, and I thought I had my way cut out with two. Oh, far more sensible number. <laughs> thanks, Mum. Listen, we're in a living number eight. You must pop over sometime. Oh, that's very nice. Thanks, Jackie. Grace, lovely to meet you. See ya. Bye. Take care, see ya. Bye. She seems nice. What, the hard as nails Jackie Varnum? As I said, take it with a pinch of salt. Well, uh, I'll see you soon. Yeah. Dan! Hello, Kirsty. How are you doing? Good to see <laughs> you. I've been great. You've changed. Have you found my box yet? No, Dad, I haven't. But listen, Max wants you to dig out the damn-proof guarantee. We need someone to have a look at the back wall. Well, I don't think I've got that anymore. But well, you said you did before the sale. But anyone else would make you produce it, Dad. We'll have to pay for that now. I know, be as perfect as you can be. Oh, and I'm not even going to have another Barney with you. If you'd rather waste your time having to go with Gary than getting yourself a job, then. I've got an interview for the job tomorrow, actually. Oh, yeah? What for? Computer Games Company in Warrington sent me CV in on spec. Oh, yeah? Since when have you known about computers? Well, I play games on it slow and work. Huh? I watch the footy. It doesn't mean to say I'm going to get a run out at Anfield. <laughs> yeah, well, look, I read this article, and all they're interested in is people that are passionate. Yeah, I mean, has got to be easier to get Yeah, but haven't you got enough programming look, skills? That, it's an admin job. There's 200 people working on these things. Well, I'm glad to see you getting somewhere. Well, don't just wish us luck, will you? Look, Dad, can you have another look for this form? Yeah, can you have another look for my box? Yeah, if I get a mini. It's just a cardboard box, Jack. It originally had corned beef in it. You can't miss it. Minging. Have you called the police? What can they do? Well, to arrest him, maybe? Did Luke see anything of this? No. And what are you doing? Don't be soft. Alan! Look, I'm not having this. Oh, Dad, stay here, please. You didn't get anywhere near him, Mr Gordon. I'm sorry, remind me why you're here. Dad! Behave, will you? What is all the shouting for? Dad! <laughs> all right, Stu, how are you doing, mate? Yes, yeah, son. Hey, what happened to your hair last time I saw you? You were all right, baby. Job interviews, mate. Anyway, look at you. You've grown a bit, haven't you? Yeah, so have you. Only here, though. Oh, that's all paid for, that. It's been a while since we've seen you, Dan. Must be, what, three? Four years. Four years, yeah. We were only talking about you today. Your ears must have been burning. You must have been surprised. Yeah, I was. Yeah, well, I thought I'd just, um, you know, surprise her. Yeah? I wonder what Sean thought. Who cares? What he means is Sean must have found it a bit strange, you being here with Ruth. Yeah, I suppose he, he must have done, yeah. yeah. Are you trying to imply something, Dad? Because if you are... So are we going to phone the police or what? Well, the busy is what's happened. See, Stuart, if you turned your music down, you might know what was going on in the outside world. I've had the police before and they don't do anything. I mean, they might send a car around if you're lucky, but Sean's long gone by now. Come in. Hello. Have you haven't had your tea? Indian. I've just had beans on toast. OK, so blow my excuse for calling right out of the water, why don't you? No sauce. What's this? Your hobby? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's for our wills. So, can 
cancel a date and then I don't hear from you for a week. Uh, I'm not really au fait with the rules these days, but my daughter assures me this is a definite sign I've been blown out. No, you haven't. So what's the story? <sighs> Look, I know what Nikki told you, and it's not fair, me asking you to. I think I should be the judge of that. But I can't trust myself. I thought about what she said, and I know what I'm getting into. I still want to give it a go. But that's it. You don't know. And the woman who wrote that book that you're reading, she doesn't know. She doesn't know what I'm capable of, and neither do you, Helen. OK. So I'll just take this home for Steph, shall I? Helen. Hang on. I suppose I could manage a couple of those giant crisps. Still into steps, then? <laughs> As if. Get lost. You love them. No, I was into hip-hop, and I still am. I bought you a fan club membership for your birthday. So, Dan, what have you been doing since uni? Ah, you know, I did a little bit of travelling. It's brilliant, actually, all around the Far East. Have you read that book, The Beach? Yeah. Oh, it, you've only seen the film. Do you go and put the kettle for us today? I have ready. No, she's lying because she wants to impress you. <laughs> <laughs> At least I can read without saying the words out loud. You want to watch her? She's on the rebound. And you're not. It's her you want to watch. So, what are we going to do? Can we just drop it? No, we can't. When are we going to go and see him? I've done all the talking I want to do. I'm not on about talking. Look, you'll only make it worse. Actually, you need to do some talking to us. Dad. Ruth's right. Let's leave it till tomorrow. I'm done in. I think we could all do with getting to bed. Oh, right. Um, yeah, well, it's fantastic seeing you all again. Especially so out of the blue. Yeah, right. Um, see you later, guys. Bye. See myself out. I'll go and check on Luke. All right, love. Look, I'm sorry about all of this. Yeah, right. Some coincidence. Yeah. Ex-boyfriend turning up in the middle of all this carry-on. Doesn't take a genius, does it? Well, you know what she's like. She'll tell us when she wants to tell us. Hello? So it better not be you, Rob. It's really the police? Yeah. Hello, Dexter. I know, he calls me all the time, but you keep telling me there's nothing you can do about it. What's this? What? I am stuffed. <laughs> I never want my curry by the time I've eaten the poppadoms and the side dishes. And the rice. And the chips. Maybe we should have had another Barbie, eh? I mean, that's how they celebrate in the States, isn't it? The States? Tomorrow the 4th, Independence Day. Oh, yeah. Never thought. Well, it's Independence Month, really. Bastille Day, Emily Pankhurst Day, Constitution Day in Puerto Rico. You've been spending too much time on that internet. What is it about July? Well, I don't suppose you want to go storming the Bastille when it's all cold and wet, do you? See, other countries do it right. Never mind this poxy. Jubilee. You know, they celebrate people taking control of their own lives, don't they, eh? Helen, I... I do want to make a go of this, you know. So do I. But there's something you need to know. What Nikki said. Inappropriate sexual behaviour or whatever I know what that works. means. I read about it. Yeah, but reading and seeing are different. I'm all right with it. Look, it can be worse than you think. I understand. We I almost forced being... myself on her. Come on, Dad! Dad! I haven't got a key! 
I haven't got me key, Dad. I haven't got me key, Dad. Oh, at last. Wait. Get in here. Oh, sorry, mate. They all look the same to me. Sorry, mate. What are you trying to do? Wake up the old close? It's not my point. You never gave me the keys. Get in here. That's another great impression we've made. Sorry, but, like, to me, it's not just like us. I've got to fit in with them. You get what I'm saying? Why is there no food in this house? Just because you finish school doesn't mean you can stay out all hours. It's not late. Any time I'm asleep. That's the dictionary definition of late. You said yourself you can't sleep because of giving up the ciggies. Anyway. And where are you off to? Totally. You've been on the pop, haven't you? It's my view. What's she doing in my room? Oh, you're in her room. Oh, Sam, don't anyone ask me. But not tonight. You're in with Stuart. What? Why? Thanks. See if I can look up now. What's she doing here? I'd be hand down. And that's someone who's only ever tried to help me out. And what does she get in return? I nearly wreck her life. Yeah. And I don't even remember it, Helen. But... <sighs> that's me for you. That's what I'm like without my little pills. That's what I'm like inside here. So are you all right with that? Cos I'm not going to get better. I'm going to be on those pills forevermore because that's the only way I can take responsibility for my actions. So then you've got it under control, Yeah, for now. But I can't promise you that it'll always be like that. Is this supposed to scare me off? Well, better late than never. Well, you're going the right way about it. Hiya. There's some uh, chips left over if you just want to zap them in the microwave. All right. What's this? That is Rob Dexter's suicide note. He sent me that. And then he threw himself under a train. He's dead because of me. I didn't even see that message because I just wanted red. What are you doing, Dad? Just want to find that box. I'll turn up. What's the worst that could happen? Who's at the door? Oh, one of the new family's kids, little Scally. He's been on the ale, probably. I couldn't sleep anyway. My teeth are still killing me. Not that I'm admitting it to our Jackie, though. I want to get that looked at, you know. You can't have it keeping you awake at night. No, it's not just that. I can't get this interview out of my head. Not nervous, are you? No, well, the thing is, I haven't seen much else. And if this doesn't come off, what then? Another security job? Yeah, but don't go building your hopes up too high on this one. Dad, I just want to do something that I'm proud of. And if I get this, I'll be doing something that I enjoy and I'll be using my degree at last. I thought your degree was all about filming. Well, yeah, but we get computers as well, OK, not that much. But nowadays, people spend more time playing computer games than watching telly. Must be some competition for jobs, though. Well, it's expanding all the time. Employment is up 10% last year. You know, since I graduated, the market's worth $2 billion, $3 billion by the end of next year. Dollars. Well, that's what it said in the magazine. I read at the dentist. Oh, well, the worst they could do is say no, I suppose. You know what? That is what annoys me about our Jackie's attitude. Like, there's no chance of me getting anywhere with me complaints against the doctor. So as far as she's concerned, I shouldn't even bother. No way, Mike. Why should I let him get away with it? Yeah, I know, but I do wish that you stop She's going only on defending him because he's a mate. You know, who does she think she is? Telling me I'm out of order for sticking up for you. Well, you're not gonna get anywhere, believe me. And all this obsessing about what's happened is just gonna eat you up. So what? I just wanna carry on just to show Michael, Jackie. you're gonna have to let it go. All right, so if there's one thing I learned to... I am not letting it go. Well, you're not a hiding to nothing, then. I'll have to get going after this. Steph, yeah? Yeah, of course. That must have been hard for you to tell me that. Yeah. It's horrible what you did to her. I know. Still, I... Uh... I suppose at least we know the danger signs now. I can't guarantee it won't happen again. And I can't guarantee that I'll stick around if it does. Who can guarantee anything? I don't know if I'll cope. Maybe I will walk if it happens again. But 
I need to know that you want her. Well, how can we know that? How can anyone know that? Does that mean it's not worth trying? Look, my eyes are open. I've signed up. I've decided that you're worth it. God help me. <sighs> I had a safe, comfortable relationship with Clive, and that didn't work out, so... I think I can afford to take a few risks. I think you might be the one who's looped the loop. <laughs> she... <laughs> well, well, I think I'm going to have to keep this. Damn. I know you never liked him. What do you want to be bothering with him again for? Well, uh, he helped me out. Does he know where his room is now? I mean, is there any chance of me actually getting some sleep around here? Why should she get the good room? Why should you? We agreed. Yeah, well, you're only sharing because of her. Oh, don't bring me into this. You said I was going to get my own room. And then I'm stuck with him fast and all night. Like 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 he wakes you up and launches him in your face. Me, exactly <laughs> so I've had the choice. I can't wait to get away from here. Yeah, and I can't wait for you to go either. And we can have your room. Danny, for the last time, you're not getting my room! He is. He's not staying a man. You and Ruth, Jay. I've got a four-year-old. He's only little. Holly, you're just being stupid. You're just being a mess. You're a mess. You're both mess. Because you're a mess and you stink. Oh, does it matter? Yes! yes. Go on, get to bed. All of you. Ali! Oh! Just how we always dreamt it'd be. Why would he do it? Why would the guy he... had serious problems. It wasn't about you, Gabby. I could have listened. I could you tried. Have... He wasn't living in the real world, though, unfortunately. I should have got help. You can't help someone like that unless they want to be helped. I didn't even try. You know, I think if anyone's to blame here, it's actually the police. If they'd gone round when we first you reported it. Back. <laughs> Maybe he wouldn't. If you called him back, he would have seen that as a come on, wouldn't he? He was lonely. His wife died. He was selfish, is what he was. Now, I'm sorry that he's dead, but he took the easy way out. It's the people he left behind that are going to have it tough. Don't you think that this is exactly how he wanted you to feel? Yeah. I hate him for it, but I feel like this because it's my fault. Oh, come on now. You didn't ask him to kill himself. I did. <laughs> Last time he called, he said he just wanted to talk, nothing else. And I said I never wanted to talk to him ever again. And he said if I didn't call him back that night, <laughs> then he'd kill himself. You yeah, weren't to know that, were you? And I really don't think there was anything that you could have said to stop him. No. I said, go ahead and kill yourself. I told him to do it, and he did. <laughs> Sorry, are we living in the dark ages? He hit you. You don't just learn to get away with it, you know. Can't help wondering. If he'd never met me, would he still be alive? What's the point of thinking like that? Sorry I was so long, I just uh... Open your eyes, it is getting us nowhere. Yes, I know that, and that's why I'm taking it to court. You are? That's tomorrow at 8 o'clock, and if you have feelings of despair or suicide or are worried about somebody who has, you can call the Samaritans at any time of the day or night on 08457 1990 Next on 4, it's ER.
you think you should delete those messages now? The police said not to. Don't you think you should stop looking at them? The guy had been depressed for a long time. It's not down to one thing anyone did or said that made him commit suicide, you know. But I can't help wondering, if he'd never met me, would he still be alive? What's the point of thinking like that? Better get ready. Why don't you take the day off? I can't. I'm too busy. My presentation. Are you sure you're up to it? Please, have you seen me black top? That must be in there somewhere. No, I can't find anything in this house. I've got to be there by half past. All right. There's your toothache. It's killing me. Thanks for reminding me. I had some computer magazines I needed as well. They've gone missing. This place is driving me mad. You'll have to get some painkillers while you're out. What do you think? It's not very smart. No, it's a computer games company. If I turn up in a suit, they'll just laugh at me. I should be dressed like that Gary Parr, but I haven't got his money, have I? They're interested in you, not what you're wearing. Anyway, you look nice like that. Do you think so? Yeah. Maybe you should wear a tie with me, ties. Oh, we just relax. You look fine, OK? Right, I'm just nervous. Mike, stop worrying. Just go and show my good you are. Look, look, I don't want to blow it. This could be the day everything turns round for us. As if it's not enough. Yobbo's banging on your door all night. Well, just the lads from over the road. One too many bevies, that's all. Yeah, but his family have just blocked my car in. Do you know what? They've got three motors close to me up the street. Well, that's very nice for them, isn't it? Some of us have got to get two buses for a job interview. Oh, why don't you ask Jackie if you can take the car? After yesterday, no way. Did you see them scrapping in the street yesterday? We've got a right gang of scallies here. They were scrapping? Right. I'm off. Best of luck. Yeah, good luck, son. Uh, you sure Mike! OK. Yeah. I'll have a word with the parents when I see them. I mean, it may have been all right for them to run right where they were living before, but not here it isn't. Not ever. Scully's. Ali! I want you off! Five minutes! Oh, do you know when I went to Ellie's to pick up my car? I had a note, and the people who bought our house have started decorating already. I do not want to know what they've done to my house. Can I have my cereal? Oh, you've had two bowls already. Oh, here, love. Finish mine. Uh, well, he's having to be a good little lad at the moment, aren't you, Thunderbird One? Yes, my lady. <laughs> I wish you'd let us phone the police last night. They wouldn't have done anything. They didn't before. I'm sorry. Are we living in the dark ages? He hit you. You don't just let him get away with it, you know. Yeah. They wouldn't have done anything. <sighs> Lucky Dan turned up when he did, though. Yeah. I mean, you don't see him for years, and there he is, out the blue. Knew we'd moved and that you'd be staying oh, here mate. and everything. Listen, mate, no more school. No more school holidays. According to you, I'm supposed to stay on. Yeah, well, I'm just showing you how miserable I'd make your life be on the dole. <sighs> Touch it and die. Kirsty, we'll see how his GCSE results go first. Don't hold your breath. Then you'll be resitting. Oh, it's a waste of time. French, hate them, never going near. English, what's the point of learning plays in some old language? The point is, Ali, I say so. <laughs> it's like you've got any qualifications. Yeah, and look how far it's got me. You do OK? Yeah, OK. Well, and it's harder now. If you leave school no qualifications, you've got no choice. So says the uni dropout. I know, I was stupid. Do you know what, we've got jobs in our places, all in boxes. They won't look at kids unless they've got three A-levels. They haven't got to. No point in doing two years A-levels if they're not going to do the work. See? May as well be out getting a job. Oi. You stay downstairs. Never mind your bad head. I wasn't drinking. Hey! Please, I love you. Please, please text me. It doesn't say that. As if we can't tell, Ali. I wasn't drinking. Banging down neighbours' doors in the middle of the night. I don't like that. But being lied to. It doesn't say that. Where's my coffee? I know where the kettle is. I don't. I don't know where anything is. That's a problem. I don't even know where my room is now. That's mature. Ugh. I'm hungry. As an outsider, what do you make of the human race? You freak. Me too. I'm going round to Sean's later. No, I don't want a repeat performance. Not from you and not from Dan. Dan! Ali. Listen, love, I've got to go. I thought you had the rest of the week off. Oh, we know it's like. System's gone down. No one knows what's what. So, listen, I shouldn't be long, yeah? You're not the only one with a job to do. Someone's got to stay here and sort this lot out. Yeah. <sighs> I believe we're seeing you tonight. Tonight? Yeah, Jackie said she'd invited you over. Well, I think it was tonight. Sorry, it must have gone out of my head. Oh, well, come anyway. <laughs> we could all do with being cheered up after this move. And I can treat you to the best leftovers the restaurant has to offer. Actually, do you mind if we leave it? Oh, all right then. If you don't mind having it on your conscience. It'll be me that'll suffer, though. She'll go into a right strop and she'll blame it on me. But don't you worry. So, um... Have you got something else on, or...? This Dexter bloke, has he been back on the scene? Oh, yeah. He found a way to get me in the end. 
How old are you? It's for our worlds. I'm just testing it. Oh, why, yeah. You were living it up last night, weren't you, with your takeaway and your train set? Yeah, well, some of us know how to live, don't we? You know, and I did have company. Don't you? Helen? I think it's back on the cards, kid. What about Look, I told her the lot. The whole Jekyll and Hyde bit. And how'd she take that? Well, ask her if you like. She's still chained up in the extension. Jimmy. <laughs> I should come round to my way of thinking in the end. No, Jimmy, behave yourself. How'd you take it? In a stride, kidda. I mean, I think she'd prefer it if it didn't chase around the room like Benny L, but she's prepared to give it a go. But she's sure she knows what she's committing herself to. And are you? Look, me and H have got a new constitution. Total honesty. No promises we can't keep. We're just gonna do our best. I didn't spill that one. Oh, no harm done. <laughs> Will you give it a rest? Doesn't it bother you that your sister's having a hard time? <laughs> like it's awful. She's been seeing down behind Sean's back. Hallie! That's what's been happening. It's obvious. <laughs> Where are you going, Mum? Told you she was seeing the one. Ali. Do you have to? Since when did we swear in this house? It's not just me. You want to see what she's been texting? <gasps> Both of you don't. Especially not in front of Luke. Why? He's going to hear it at school. I don't care. Cut it out. It's only a word. Which I don't want to hear in my house. But why? Because it's offensive. Why? Because what it means is offensive. Because it's aggressive and it's abusive. So the more you use it, the less offensive it is. You've got a good enough vocabulary, there's no need to swear. It shows a lack of education. Nah, so is it funny. Swearing's funny, man. It's the language of the street. That's me, street. Actually, it's part of the move to a more classless society. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's working class language. And it's more common now because we don't have to better ourselves anymore by copying the knobs. Cut it out! What? Oh, that's not even a swear word. But only sometimes. She's how stupid it all is. I don't care what you learned in A-level sociology. Our house was working class and there was no swearing in front of my dad, ever. <sighs> it's so hypocritical. Everyone swears, but in polite company, they pretend they don't. You swear. My dad swears all the time, I bet you. Not here! <sighs> it's about respect. That's why I don't like it any more than I like people spitting in the street or drinking in shop doorways. <sighs> the language changes. It's a living thing. It evolves all the time. Yeah? How did your dad tell you off? Oh, good heavens, wash your mouth out. I mean, what's my dad's favourite programme? Father Ted? They practically swear every other line, but it's all right because they've changed one letter. I'm sorry, this is logical. How? That chores us war. We did it in just yesterday. It's all about who gets to decide what's acceptable. It's just part of this nanny state. Serious, though. That chores, I love this. Ali! Happening. But of course, young man Chaucer from the house, would your mother? Or Shakespeare, for that matter. And he is full of filth and all. It's not socially acceptable. Says who? I mean, remember that fella from the Stephen Byers row? He worked in the government, and he was a sir, and yet it was all right for him to publish that memo. You may well have all the answers, but what matters is, I don't like it. And more importantly, a lot of other people, I'd say the majority of people, don't like it either. But it's the way people talk. Some people, sometimes. It's about how you're perceived. It's not fair. Neither is it fair making people feel uncomfortable. It's a free country. What happened to freedom of speech? He wasn't dangerous. He was just sad. I keep thinking, if I'd done things differently, if I'd called him back... You drive yourself crazy with all that stuff. But what I said, I said, go ahead, do it. That makes me responsible. No! Even Gary thinks so, I can tell. You can't be to blame just because a man had a fixation for you. But I must have led him on. I mean, it doesn't just happen. It doesn't happen to other people. You're an attractive woman. You're outgoing, you're confident, you're bound to get unwanted attention. I send out the wrong signals or something. Do I come across as flirtatious, Max? Who doesn't occasionally? It's not as if it's the first time. When I was at university, there was this lecturer. He followed me home once. What, he turned up at your flat? No, home to Guildford. And <laughs> this was from Leeds. So, there's another man with problems up here. <laughs> How can it be your fault? Gary thinks it is. I put it out too much, according to him. He says it's no wonder I have other men thinking they're on for it. That's ridiculous. I don't know how I let this happen. You, you didn't. Whatever. A man's dead because of me. I don't know how I'm supposed to cope with it. I'm sorry. Oh, come on, please. You, you don't feel guilty if you don't want to. You don't know what guilt can do. Oh, you don't know what it's like. I do. Look, Susanna, my wife, she... What? You weren't responsible for her. I had a terrible row the night she died, after which I left. Well, she'd been drinking and she fell down the stairs. But later I learned that she hadn't died for several hours. Now, 
If I'd gone back... Oh, you couldn't have known. <laughs> exactly. You, you can't blame yourself. You know, you realise that eventually. That, that, that's the weird thing with guilt. It, it goes away. You don't think it will, but it does. And what can you do but just get on with your life? And that's not going to happen with you just staying in the house. All the more reason for you to come round later. <laughs> oh, here's, here's Mike. Hey, Dad, is it? Keep your fingers crossed. Hiya. How did you get on? It was after I split it with Sean, OK? OK. I just bumped into him in town one night. I didn't even know he was back in Liverpool. When was this? A couple of months ago. It was just mates at first, catching up on old times, and then... Well, he was the first one. He never goes away, does it? Why didn't you tell us about this yesterday? I haven't done anything wrong. Look, I like Dan. You know I do. But you were a married woman. But it was over. I assume Sean found out about it. So, you've had all day to calm down. Did they say why? Didn't need to. I had no chance. Be so hard on yourself. I felt stupid, Rach. I didn't understand half the questions. Changes oh. happen very fast, I suppose, in the computer industry. Do you know what? Eight years ago, I graduated. I might as well be 80. I mean, I read up on games, engines and avatars. But I'd heard of half the software they were talking about. You can't be expected to know it all before you start working there. <sighs> no, Rachel, I've fallen too far behind. You know, I thought the money was going to be in film. And you know, having a camera slung over your shoulder. I backed the wrong horse, as ever. Well, you won that prize at the Edinburgh Fringe for your film that time. You have got talent. Rachel, you're not hearing me. It's eight years too late. I've missed the boat. I thought you had a media degree or something. Surely that will help. <laughs> yeah, if it did it now, it would be. They actually help you to get jobs. I think I might pop over and see Jimmy, but first I'll let. Time to face facts. Even if I did retrain, how would I ever keep up? I could always look into retraining. I can't hold out forever. We need money coming in, don't we? I have noticed. Actually, I've been thinking about the money situation. <sighs> I'm not getting another loan. We should get your teeth sorted while there's still an offer of free treatment. What? Let that doctor weasel his way out. I just feel like we're going to fight it all the way and then yeah, end up with nothing. Yeah, it's the principle of the thing. Yeah, I know. I'm just not sure we can afford to have principles. I'll go. Where did you say Ali went? <laughs> Tomo's. For a change. That's what I love about this family. Everybody mucks in. Hello, <laughs> would you like to come and play? But you were supposed to lose your appetite. Yeah. What? Are you heartbroken? I'm glad to see you're all yeah. taking it so seriously. We well, could take your mind off it by helping yeah. us sort the house out. Hello again. Hello, Mrs. Gordon. Yeah, what are you? It's okay, she knows. All oh, right. Bye bye, Pete. Oh my God, Luke! Tell me that wasn't really Pete. <laughs> Sounds like you turned up just in time last night, Dan. Well, five minutes too late, if you ask me. Um, I'm going to head up to the house and pick up some stuff. I don't think Sean will be there, and, well, Kirsty's lending us a car. OK, will you be careful? We'll leave Luke here. Sorry I was so long, I just, uh... Oh, I'm sorry, the place is still a mess. We're still trying to get straight. That's OK. <laughs> Great paper. Eh, uh, me dad's. Thank <laughs> God for that. Hi. Hi. Listen, I won't be a minute. I'm just going to check on the kids and make yourselves at home. So, how are we all? Yeah, fine. Not too bad, thanks. Good. Well, let's get this open, shall we? We can uh, find a court screw. <laughs> be anywhere. <laughs> yeah. We could have cried off, you know. Oh, I don't want to be sat in thinking. Yo, I'm sorry. It just feels like you're bottling things up here. I don't want to talk about it. Gabby. Ah! Come on. I don't think I'd be very happy if I lost my wife and child to another fella. Nothing happened until Sean had gone. Oh, did he see it like that? Oh, so nearly getting beaten up was my fault, yeah? We didn't do anything wrong. Excuse me, I'm talking to my daughter. Alan, would you rather she had to cope on her own? You don't just walk away from a marriage. Do you think I didn't try? Why don't you do what you said? Go round to your house and pick up your stuff. You might want to think it was all rosy in the garden, Dad. You don't know what I had to go through. I tried. And no way am I going back to Sean. It's a pity you didn't listen to us before you got married, then. Go on. 
Just go. No, I shouldn't have split her with Dan. I shouldn't have dropped out of uni and I shouldn't have got married. And thank God I've got you to remind me, just in case I forget how bad I messed up. Do you know what your problem is, Ruth? You don't think anyone else can be right except you. Yeah, and I wonder who I got that from, eh? I just love you, Max. Really nice. It's your favourite this girl, isn't it, eh? Mm. You know, we should really do the same for you sometime soon. No, honestly, look, we owe you one for the way our mic's been carrying on. I just wish you'd drop it for his sake as much as anything else, you know? I mean, I offered to get his teeth fixed because I felt genuinely sorry for him, but at the end of the day, I felt like I did nothing wrong. It's our mic all over, unfortunately. Mm, he's the grand master of shooting himself in the foot. You must get it all the time, do you? Oh, yeah, I've got filing cabinets full of complaints. Especially for people upset because we haven't found the magical cure, you know? <laughs> well, that's the problem, isn't it? I mean, patients, they don't have the same respect for their doctors like they used to have. Yeah, but you don't want to go back to that, do you? People feel that they can't question their doctor. Well, society's rife with it. It's the same with teachers and police. Everybody thinks they know better. Oh, you mean us little folks should know our place and let the professionals like you make all the decisions for us? Well, that'd be the first time something like that happened in our house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ignore them. He used to be a surveyor in a past life. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned that. He'll have his old field delays out in a minute. <laughs> oh, Max, at the table. <laughs> yeah, now you mention it. I haven't seen it since we moved. Well, it's probably still next door. Do you know what? I never feel like moving ever again. Well, we are in six months' time. It's a great house, though, isn't it? Yeah, well, it will be once we've removed all traces of me dad. Oh, it must have been so hard for you with all the memories of Susanna. I was saying to Gabby this morning how I didn't go back for Susanna when she fell down the stairs. All right. Big help. I must have been, though, um, especially the way that you were so upset. You were upset? Oh, I was just telling him about what happened to Dexter and um, the floodgates sort of opened. What happened to Dexter? Um, we just found out that he committed suicide. He sent a text message saying it was because of me. Gabby, I'm really sorry. It's OK. Why didn't you tell me? It was private, really. Let's see if I can find another one of these. There's no reason for doing what he did to her. Well, if he comes around here again, I'll do the same to him. But you're not telling me she's given us the whole picture. Well, so what if she isn't? If she's had an affair, so what? Why are you defending Sean when you've never had a good word to say about him? I'm not defending him! If she hadn't have got pregnant, he'd have been a five-minute wonder. She'd have gone back to college and got back with Dan then, probably. If her life's back on track, then I'm not shedding any tears for soft lad, especially not after last night. Deb, I'm just trying to be practical. Where's she going to live, love? She can't stay here forever. There's no room. What's the alternative? She goes to one of those shelters. I'm not having that. <coughs> and if that's work, you can tell them to get lost. I want you here to talk to your daughter. Sorry if I wasn't much company. Oh, listen, don't worry about it. If Max had told me, I might not have sat there gabbing away like nothing was wrong. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Sorry. Uh, okay, well, listen, thank you. Bye. No worries. Good night now. Bye. Gabby, hang on a second. You didn't tell me that you spoke to Max. No. No, well, I'm sorry, but it just seems that he's heard more about the way you feel than I have. Oh, of course he hasn't. So, how do you feel, then? What else can I say? Max just caught me at a bad moment. Oh, Gabby, come on. I don't want to keep analysing it all the time. Dexter was a bad part of my life, and now he's gone. Let's move on. Hey, where are the lads? Stuart went to Scots after football and Ali. He should be out looking for a summer job. Well, we'll give him till after the weekend to stop sulking about the move, and then he'll have to knuckle down. Don't worry, we're only here to pick a loop. He's soft. Sit down, have something to eat. No, it's OK. We'll go to Dan's mum's. Look, your mother's right, yeah? You're both welcome, you know that. Thanks, Mr Gordon. I think you'd better call me Alan now, but you're a bit older than you used to be when you come round here. I'll put something in the oven. Oh, no, leave it till later. If you don't mind waiting. How are your mum and dad these days, Dan? Yeah, they're very well, thank you. You still a blue nose, your old man? Yeah, I think it's terminal. Terrible to have one of the afflicted in your own family, isn't it? 
Where are you working now? Just doing a little bit of bar work. I'd not long been back from Japan when I met Ruth again. You could always go back to that Saturday job you both had in the supermarket. The fish counter, no thanks. I thought you wanted a job in engineering. I've had a couple of job interviews, but motorway maintenance, but, you know... Oh, what, you need a degree to put cones out these days, do you? Well, it's like that, yeah. But in the meantime, you've just got to take whatever brings the money in, don't you? You should have a word with our Ali. You're not staying again, are you? She can stay as long as she wants. All right, Ali. Long time no see, mate. Where am I going to sleep? Your room. Oh, nice one. Stuart's in with you. No Ruth way. and Luca have in his room. I'm just going to take these upstairs, yeah? Yeah. I can't believe you're letting him stay. He's a nice lad. Behave yourself. Stay on Tom Walsh. Oi, get back here. You know what? Why I ever let you persuade me to move, I've no idea. Not quite the beginning we had in mind, is it? What did they say? It's the three most stressful things you can do. What they don't tell you is your kids pass on their share of the stress. <sighs> can't eat that. Oh, this is no good, mate. We've got to sort your teeth out. Not by his mate. We need to be realistic. Look, Rachel, I'm not letting them walk all over us. Dental treatment is worth hundreds. I'm not being bullied by someone just because he's got more money than me. Do you know what? I'm sick and tired of being pushed around, passed over, ignored, made a mug of, not listened to. Why are you making this so personal? Like, I need a doctor to tell me how to complain about another doctor. It's a joke. It's procedure. Do you know what? He hasn't even apologised. And why is that? Because he knows he'd be admitting negligence. He knows he messed up big time over Beth. This is not about Beth. This is about you feeling crap about life. Open your eyes. It is getting us nowhere. Yes, I know that, and that's why I'm taking it to court. You are? He might be able to talk his way around medical negligence, but there's no way he can avoid the fact that he belted me. I don't want to go through court. Well, you see it on the telly every day. No win, no fee. It's no big deal. It's compensation culture now, just like America. Well, I'll tell you what, Rage, just for once, why can't we have a piece of the pie? Nano, Nano, Shaz Bart. What's face, mate? Oh, nothing. Go on, tell us. Man of your word, eh? You talk easy, that you're gonna win a heart. Last rights, as in... How was that bad? We nearly lost you. Yeah, best. Yours. Pity. you wanna bump the jobby? Nah, quicker to say we've been, and we'll have earned that. That next Brookside is on Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Next on four, lashings of food and wine and some hanky-panky as well. It's the way they used to live in the real country house.